What should be the official rules of college football debates? There are rules that if you break, you lose the argument. I can only come up with one, which is no personal attacks from Warner Robins, Georgia. Well, Josh Simmons, you could only come up with one, but we came up with several more. And now I'm all for no personal attacks. Should be noted, calling someone a casual is not a personal attack. If they're enrolled at casual ANF, they're enrolled there for a reason. So if you go to casual AF, that's just, that's just you. That's your label. I'm Josh. If you're a casual, I'm calling you a casual. That's not a personal attack. But I do have some that I specifically want to mention here. Some of these guys you've heard of before. The guy who tells you no matter what you're arguing about, it's his way and it's not even close. You know, heads or tails, Super Bowl coin toss. Heads, it's not even close. I can't deal with that. Get out of here. Because the, the, the irony is most of the time, if something is a heated debate, it's because at the very least it's close. Otherwise, the debate wouldn't be heated. Unless you're arguing with an idiot, in which case you need to remove yourself for other reasons. But if you're telling me, so-and-so, it's not close. Blue is the better color. It's not close. It's close. It's cl 98 is a lot hotter than 97. It's not even close. It's close. It's very close. So get that out of here. Don't want to have blank and it's not close guy. I certainly don't want to be around the guy that compares college football to pro sports that in no shape, form, or fashion resemble college football. Here's what that sounds like. The NFL does this. Major League Baseball and the NBA do it. Why can't college football? Because college football, to be clear, friend, is not Major League Baseball, it is not the NBA, and it is not the NFL. I do not owe that kind of ignorance any further explanation. That does it. One sentence, we move on, and then I hit the mute button on that person. Also, we want to avoid people who traffic in three of the big lies of college football. We have recounted them many times on this show. One of the big three lies is you are what your record says you are. No, not all 10 and 2s are created equal. A win is a win. Nope. If I beat food 56 to 3 and you beat food 30 to 29, we're talking about rice, of course, those are not equal. You are going to be punished for beating rice 30 to 29. I will be rightly credited for beating them into a coma because one of us did our job. This is not pro sports. This is college sports. Strength of schedule dictates that sometimes when you've loaded up your roster with four and five star recruits and they've taken your leftovers for five decades, you should do things to them that are illegal in about 27 states. And if you don't, even if you win, it's not equal to other wins. Also, there's the lie that going undefeated is the hardest thing to do in sports. Well, not all sports are equal. College football is not all sports. Going undefeated in college football is not the hardest thing to do. Now, if Arkansas went undefeated this year, that'd be really hard. But Miami of Ohio and Arkansas play a different caliber of opponent. And therefore, if Arkansas goes 10 and 2 and Miami of Ohio goes 12 and 0, then Arkansas has probably accomplished something a lot more incredible than what Miami, Ohio has accomplished. So those are some of the big three lies. We can do an individual segment about those later. Can you articulate the other person's argument? This is always one of the hallmarks of whether you're debating something and someone that is worth your time or not. Just stop, like right in the middle of an argument. If you think you have properly articulated your point of view more than once, once should be enough. But if you have properly articulated your point of view more than once, stop and then have them stop and then ask them, what is the point I'm making? And if they can't properly articulate it, it's because they've heard you, but they have not listened. And if you're not debating someone who's listening, you're not engaging in a debate that's worthwhile. I was doing this today. One of our esteemed viewers said, hey, you better go over to the Michigan board. They're ripping you pretty hard. And so I went over there. And hey, if I would have said the things they were alleging that I said, I would deserve to be ripped. Because there were some pretty stupid quotes being thrown around. The problem was, it was a total mischaracterization, or in some cases, just an outright misrepresentation of what I said. I spent an inordinate amount of time having to correct the record so much so that you've noticed if you watch or listen to the show, I many times before I start a segment will say, here's what I'm not saying. Just get all that out of the way because I know I'm going to have to clip it and use it to defend myself down the road. Can you articulate what the other person said? If you can't, it's a waste of time. Uh, we have to do away with people who do not know how to properly gauge success in college football. What does success look like? Do you understand that there are tiers of success? Here's what this guy sounds like. He will frequently use phrases like, well, who have they played? 
You know, if the, if the St. Louis Rams, well, I think they moved to L.A., didn't they? Yeah. If the L.A. Rams, Super Bowl champions, if the L.A. Rams were to descend to college football intact from last year, but they played four FCS opponents to start the year, you would have someone somewhere out there in the college football Twitter sphere who would look at the L.A. Rams being ranked number one and ask, well, who have they played, though? Guys, there's a big difference between the quality of team and the quality of a resume. You could be the greatest team of all time. Your resume could be trash. So you could rightfully ask, mm, do they have a deserving resume? I've asked that about very good G5 teams in the past, about the playoff. Notice, when I argued that UCF didn't belong in the playoff in 2017, I never said they're not good enough to win games in the playoff. I never said they couldn't compete. I said their resume was not deserving. But there are some folks out there who cannot detach one from the other. They'll just look anytime you want to credit a team. Like Georgia could beat Oregon by 40 in week one and drop Oregon from the uh, ranks of the undefeated and then also out of the rankings entirely. You may end up getting to week six or week seven. Georgia, because they don't have a win over a ranked opponent at that point. Who have they played? Who's Georgia played? Yeah, like Georgia really needs to prove themselves. Like there's no established track record with that team. Uh, there will also be these kinds of phrases used against coaches. I praise Dave Aranda. Well, how many titles has Dave Aranda won? None. And you just look at them. And they think they've made a point. In reality, you've made yours. Not all good head coaches out there are going to win national championship rings. Do you know why? Should be obvious, but if not, I'll tell you. Again, these, these leagues that we watch and these conferences, this sport we love, it is not fair. It is not evenly balanced. There is not parity. It's an illusion. Parity is a myth in college football. It will never be coast to coast. No matter how many times you rearrange the playoff, no matter how many times you rearrange scholarship limits, some places just care more. Some places have more money. Some places have been around 50 years longer than you have, and they've got a long head start. Some places are just going to always have an edge over you. Uh, that's the case when you compare the Baylors of the world to the Oklahomas of the world, or to the Ohio States of the world, or to the Floridas of the world. That doesn't mean Baylor can't have a really good head coach. And that can't mean that sometimes what's accomplished at Baylor, them winning a conference title last year, despite having the second to worst odds to win the conference in the preseason, isn't a monumental accomplishment. But yet you got some folks out there, the window licker crowd, if you will, that would look at that and say, what, what has Dave Aranda really won? Well, what's he accomplished, I guess is the better way to phrase it. Also, how much of your argument is based in pure speculation? You know, there are some people out there who would argue that Nick Saban is the devil. Why? Well, he's just, he's, he's done this and that his whole career. Press them on it. Have them provide you the evidence. Don't, don't have them provide you with a message board link. Don't have them send you to a Reddit thread because that is based in anonymity. Anyone can post anything they want to online. These little digits right here can do a lot of damage. It, it's okay if you think something and it's based in reality, and then you just have some supporting speculative evidence that you want to add on to it. Like, it's, it's different if you have the Christmas tree, and then you put the ornaments on, then you put the popcorn on. No one has a popcorn tree. You got a Christmas tree with popcorn on it. No one can make a well-founded argument based on speculation. That's not what the foundation can be built out of. And yet sometimes, in fact, a lot of times in college football, when you get into debates, and you really have that person walk their argument through to a logical conclusion, keep asking them questions. Give a little trick of debate class. When you know you got them on the ropes, keep asking them questions. You'll find that they'll either resort to whataboutism, which is where they just deflect and genuflect and you know, try and turn it into a ping pong match and just bounce that ball all over the place. Nope, you just never break eye contact. You let them make their point and then you get right back to the topic at hand. Okay, great. Now, what about the question I asked? Can you walk your point through to a logical conclusion? If you can't, you suck at debate. Or maybe you're good at debate and your point sucks. So those are some of the rules. As you can tell, I have, have um, studied this at one point scholastically, but also I, I engage in this a lot. I have a lot of fun with it. And so those are some of the rules of college football debate. This is not exhaustive. I would very much appreciate if you guys chimed in on this. I would uh, actually look forward to reading some of that.